Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you what I learned while I try to improve Pala Pala's decoder for binary sorting systems. This all started very recently, or should I say a few months ago. Uh, our server decided to build a binary storage and during the process of building that binary storage you need a decoder. So let's start with why you need a decoder since not everyone might be familiar with this. A decoder is basically just this thing here for starters. Um, back here you might have many many chests that you want to pull items from or just want to interact with but you only want one of those chests. To select one of those chests with a binary code, that's what the decoder does. It's, yeah, it's basically a part of the heart of the binary system, a uh, binary storage system. To understand what this does differently, we first need to understand Palace decoder. So I built a small 2-bit version right here so that we can have a look at it. Um, first of all, Palace Decoder had these observers here. They were basically the main mechanism for deciding which bit is set. If the observers were down in one line, they would form a wire, a continuous wire that leads directly to the end, to the piston here. A uh, second wire would then input something at the start of these uh, observers that would then trigger these pistons here. Now this is slice is selected, now it's deselected. While the thing is moving we need these uh, blocks here in order to prevent the signal from uh, moving the observers trigger the pistons triggering the pistons back here. If we have them down, this happens. We don't want that, so we move that up while we move the observers around. Then we move the blocks back down, send the signal, one is selected, deselect the signal. This is fairly slow for a few reasons. A, these are not instant lines. Instant lines cannot be next to each other anyways, but this is not an instant line, and so it was fairly slow. The second reason why it is fairly slow is that this back here is not an instant line. It's just an observer line. That's pretty slow too. What you want is a system that's fast. To make it fast, I added rail lines here at the bottom, instant rail lines, that trigger the uh, pistons that move blocks around. Instead of using an observer line in the middle, I simply have this limestone line right, line right here that's at push limit. As soon as any kind of additional block from here attaches to it, it cannot extend anymore. That means as soon mm -hmm. as we trigger it, all of these are blocked and this one isn't blocked and it will instantly extend. Mm. This is quite interesting because this allows quite fast evaluation. How fast? Well, let's just have a look. Oops, oopsie. <laughs> I need to connect the randomizer. As you can see, it connects pretty fast and shows the output pretty fast. Unlike Palapella's design, this is basically uh, 01, meaning that th it doesn't matter how many bits you add, you always will take the same time. It's something like 11 or 9 GT, I'm not quite sure. I didn't bother to completely count it or test it through. Uh, because I've been adapting design and I just want to get this video out. I've been working on this non-stop basically for the last few days. Yeah. 
Uh, this right here is six bits. All right. This just is a randomizer. These are just the connections to the instant wires. Connection to the randomizer. Uh, yeah, this activates and deactivates the input. This is a timing circuit for all of this. Yeah. But the basic idea is pretty simple. And I have to say, I like this basic idea. And I've been working around with it some more. More than just this decoder. Before I release a video, I usually show some people my designs and ask them what they have to say about this or if there's any kind of better design out there that I just missed out on and <laughs> I'm just behind the times and I didn't quite get a, the sense that there's a better design out there. Uh, just that people said that you might not have enough space for enough bits because I only showed this version which is only six bits. Uh, so, a f server mate of mine, NLS, uh, I'll probably put a link to his video channel, uh, to his YouTube channel in the video description or blend it in, uh, made this one. This is 2GT slower, 2 game ticks slower, because it has this additional observer at the bottom here, but it's super compact, super space compact. There's it's super, uh, like, super compact. Um, I also made this version, which is a lot cleaner, which is also the full 11 bits that you can support with uh, my layout that I did before. Sadly, this is not quite at hopper speed yet. I know that many people wished it was at hopper speed, but I don't think we'll achieve hopper speed decoding anytime soon. Uh, especially since you need to await the response of the system. Yeah. This currently here is the fastest timing it gets. This is this kind of clock. Not sure if you can read into it what it does. But yeah. Working with push limit though made me curious. There had to be some kind of applications that I didn't think of before that would be possible to use in this scenario. So uh I came up with this here. Uh, this is a set of, yeah, uh, what's the name again? Of logic gates uh, that use this system. Um, we have these inputs here that can be either on or off. And we have uh, these blockers here that do several things. Um, for now, let's ignore that part. This is an AND gate. Uh, currently, the first slice is selected, so to speak. Uh, basically, it means that we have A and B to zero, and then there is glazed terracotta directly uh, on top of the slime, and the blocks don't stick to slime. In all the other slices, the slime t sticks to the concrete, and the entire thing gets blocked by the obsidian back here. Um, if we switch around A and B a little, you can see that we'll get different slices selected. Oopsie. Ignore that. We get different slices selected. And... Uh, Oh. <laughs> yeah. This is basically just an end gate, a quick end gate and not gate that you can use in a very compact manner here to uh, calculate and combine many values. Um, the second set here is more interesting in my opinion. Um, now we'll have to ignore this first part here. So let me just set this up. Uh, 
this here is an OR gate. Right now, this here is blocked by two concrete. That means it's above push limit. If it was only one of these concrete, then the line is below push limit and it can actually move. It will push, attempt to push the concrete and push it, but we can safely ignore that for our purposes. And this basically back there is an OR gate. So what we have here is quite complex functions that evaluate extremely fast. I have put these functions back here. So x, x is the input back here. This is x. If c or d is triggered and a or b are not triggered, then this line will respond to x. So I thought, what can I do with this? Um, and of course, the most basic explanation that you can think of is routing. We uh, basically select which channel is active and we want to route our signal to. And then we send the data through that channel. And the gate doesn't impose any additional delays for X. And X can just keep sending its information without delay. And uh, yeah, it's also extremely fast gates in general, logical gates. Uh, the, the second thing I came up with just to play around with the logical gates and the possibilities of this is this right back here. Uh, this combines A and B. Uh, A and B are currently to zero and nothing will happen as expected. Uh, this first slice here is A or B, just to showcase. It once again works as before with the push limit logic. So if either one of them is moved, uh, the thing is below push limit and can move. And what we have back here is an end gate. These two, once again, then basically culminate into a single line once again, which is an exclusive OR. Currently both are active, so this won't work. If only one of them is active, the thing can push. Oopsie. Oh, I think it's fine. No, it isn't. Um, working with this made me curious though, because it's still quite complex. It's basically like most other gates in the sense that uh, you have two gates that two gates that have to process before you come to your final conclusion in the XOR gate and I wanted to know if I can do it faster and the answer to it is actually yes and that's what this is back here I really had to break my brain for this one uh, this is basically two OR gates combined with an end um, if the first one doesn't fire, the second one doesn't trigger. So if neither of them are active, the first one doesn't fire and nothing happens. If either of them are active, both fire. If both of them are active, our second line is at push limit and actually won't push. Uh, just to showcase this, uh, this is A or B, the output of A or B. 
Uh, this is the output of a or b and and unequal a and and unequal b. That means the output is true when at least one of them is active, but not both of them. That's basically oops a xor b that's basically what we calculate here anyways that's it for me for this time hope you enjoyed it and if you did leave a like and if you have any questions or corrections I know some people out there probably are keeping bullet lists of things I said wrong, but <laughs> if you have any of that, do it in the comments. And as always, well downloaded in the description.